four five eight is the number. Mm-hmm. And look who we've got. Oh. There's only one man now that understands. And that's the author of Idiot America. Pierce. Pierce. Charlie Pierce, political columnist for Esquire.com. Why is everybody always laughing with me? Good morning, Charlie Pierce. <laughs> Good morning, my sweet babu. (laughs) (laughs) You reminded us, some like it hot, the best. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I was just thinking after we talked about it, didn't some like it hot take place in Florida? I think it might I think you are right. Yes. I think you are right. I mean, I just remember uh, Joey Brown and Jack in the boat at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I think it took place in Miami. I think it did. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. So you as did the bird cage. As did the, as did the bird cage. The bird cage. Oh. Thank you. Fabulous Miami. movie. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't understand. I, I know it's just because he thinks his base will like it. I get that, but it's just come on, really going after nice drag shows. We can't have yeah, any. I, this is why we yeah, can't have I, nice things. I think I think Chris has got his finger on the pulse of the stupid right now. <laughs> uh, the, the, a lot of people are feeling very empowered. Mm-hmm. Who haven't felt empowered in a lot of years? Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of a scary thing. It is. It is. It's it's very frightening. So, so your thoughts on the hearings thus far, sir? Well, I was uh, I was in the room where it happened uh, <laughs> the first night, and that was astonishing to me. the The quality of the silence after that video mm-hmm. in that room was amazing, mm-hmm. just amazing to me. Uh, yesterday was okay. I mean. You know, I had Zoe Lofgren's time in the, uh, in, you know, in the spotlight. That was all right. And, you know, they're pretty much, you know, they're, they're, they're really leaning hard into the respectable half of the coup. Mm-hmm. You know, this attempt to use the Electoral College. Right. To do what the guys in the camo couldn't do. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really, really good. Because it'll, it will, it will, it will keep from from letting some of these people wash their hands of it. Uh, you know, I just wrote, I wrote a blog post this morning about a story in the Salt Lake Tribune about Mike Lee being an off, being awfully more involved in the planning of the uh, alternate elector strategy than he said he's been. Mm-hmm. Because, the, because they released a lot of documents and, and more documents in that uh, Eastman suit. You know, he's he's been suing to keep some of these 600 emails right. away from the committee and the committee's in court with him. So that got released last week. Nobody noticed it because of everything else that was going on. But, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think I've always thought they were valuable. I think, you know, the, I think primarily their their great value lies in denying the rest of us an alibi. Mm-hmm. We have no excuse if we'll if we move along and don't you know, assess any political consequences to the people who did this, then it's on us Yes, because we're going to have the information. Right. Right. We're going to have everything we need to make a judgment. And I think if that's all the committee does, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I am. I am glad that it is getting the eyeballs to it. Uh, Yeah. Apparently, Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what, what yesterday was like, but uh, they what 19 million people. Yeah. On Wednesday, on the Wednesday thing, I'm just glad. And I, you know, I think one of the things I like about it is it's being run very efficiently. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I think, you know, Benny Thompson to me is, you know, I think you underrate Benny Thompson at your peril. I agree. Because first of all, he was smart enough to let Liz Cheney carry the ball and get his own ego out of the way. Mm -hmm. Second of all, he called a recess after the video. Yeah. Uh, on, on on last Wednesday, guaranteeing that the people on TV would have at least 25 minutes to talk about it, yeah. yep. and it, and and it, and it would sink into the people who watched it, uh, which I thought was very very good. I wonder I if that idea great. came from that the ABC producer. producer. Oh, I'm sure it did. Yeah. I mean, I you know, but I I just think he's you know, he, and he's not letting everybody on the committee make a speech. Yes, which you know killed. To me, a lot of the uh, a lot of the, the the Trump hearings when Trump was in office mm-hmm. was he had to sit through everybody's five minute speech, yeah. and even the people you agreed with were boring after a while. Very true. Um, I liked your tweet about the documentary filmmaker that he shouldn't have complained about the tacos. I am with you on that. No, not the tacos. His hotel room. The hotel room. Yes. Yeah. 
He shouldn't have complained that he couldn't get a good hotel room. I, I thought that was a little. I thought that was a little dissonant. Well, I, I, I get his point though, in that yes, it there there were a lot more people in DC than even they expected there would be. Right. So I get his point. The way he did it was really was a little bit kind of a self indulgent way yeah, to say that. Right. Though. Yeah. You can say, hey, there were a lot of people, a lot more than they thought there were. I couldn't get on the subway or something. Yeah. But no, I couldn't get a good hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I I wasn't paying attention when the tacos thing happened, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Well, he he basically uh, said that the after the recon, they all went and got tacos after they got the guy out of jail, right? Well, the, yeah, they got him out of jail. They did their reconnaissance, and then yeah. they went and got tacos, and then they came back. They didn't even go to the ellipse. That was kind of the point of that was they never even bothered going to the ellipse, which shows that they didn't they weren't instructed from that moment on. They weren't they there had to been see Trump speak prior to that, right? Yeah. So um, you have a you have some opinions on the the gun bill. Um, <laughs> I like your headline. The bipartisan gun bill is a good start. Like tying your shoes is a good way to start a marathon. It's important. I think a lot of it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that it's going to pass, okay. and I think if it doesn't pass, that's embarrassing. Yes. Yeah. And the Republicans should have it hung around their neck like a dead raccoon forever. I agree. I mean, if they won't even agree to this. Uh, but again, I, I, I'm astonished that I live in a country where we can't agree that you should be 21 to buy a, a an, an AR-15. Yeah. I mean, the IRA didn't give AR-15s to 18-year-olds. No. You I mean, know. you can't drink until you're 21, and a gun is deadlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I, I, it just but it, drinking's not in the constitution. It's not in the constitution. That's the problem that, yeah. we run into with all these arguments. Exactly. That's that's the argument that, that you always the, get. Proof by the yeah. way that the founders laid down in the job. Yes, yeah. they, exactly. They should. They should. The right of the, the right of adults to a cold beer should not be infringed. Well, there weren't any drinking ages back then. There weren't. They they no, didn't think they would need no, any. No, and they, and by the way, they drank like fish. They absolutely did. I mean, it was their way of making sure that the water was actually okay to drink. Well, well, I mean, just look just, at the not, Third not Amendment. Yeah. They planned. They planned half the damn revolution in saloons. Yeah, they did. True. <laughs> true, yes. true, true. Yes, if you go to Colonial Williamsburg, every other building is a tavern. Right. <laughs> and, it, and, and it certainly was the case in Boston. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Not, o not only did they plan out the Tea Party and, every, and, and everything else in, in saloons, mm -hmm. when, they, when the Massachusetts state legislature got chased out of Boston by the British, they met in a saloon in Watertown. Of course. <laughs> about maybe a quarter mile from where I'm sitting right now. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, indeed. Indeed. So do you think that John, Jenny... John Hancock smuggled rum, for God's sake. Yeah. Got a man. And, and other spiritus liquors, as they say. Washington brewed his own beer. I know that much. Well. Yeah. See? See, there we he go. He also grew his own hemp. Oh, well, that, he That's did also that. true. That was I for that. ropes, though. That wasn't for smoking. Well, hemp, usually you don't smoke. Yeah. It's more of a material. <laughs> um, so your thoughts on Ginny Thomas. Do we? Th do you think she's going <laughs> to ever? That photo? Did you see that photo? Uh-uh. Of, of her in the green robe, holding up her fist like this, looking like some sort of cosplay Statue of Liberty? No, I didn't. Have Travis, Travis, find that photo. It's amazing. Well, I mean, do she's you think she's at the rally. It's a photo taken at the rally. Really? Yeah. Ugh. Do you think she'll be? Um... Working on it. Do you think that we will put her? I'm mad at her, and I'm mad at her husband. Do you think that it's gonna, anything's going to happen with this? Because it, it seems like she's bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know that. I mean, I don't know that there's anything that, that she's done anything criminal, right? Uh, unless they're going to have just a massive, you know, conspiracy indictment involving everybody involved yeah. in the phony elector scam. Uh, which I'm not entirely opposed to, by the way. Same. But, you know, I've got to believe at this point that Roberts is fed up. Because he doesn't need this. No. I mean, he's he's about to, like, make an enemy of, like, every American woman. Uh -huh. And he's about to unleash even more guns. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to be worrying that, you know, Clarence Thomas's wife is trying to overthrow the government. <laughs> Do you think they're going to ask her to testify, at least to the text messages between her and Meadows? Oh, I think they should. I think they should. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, why wouldn't you ask, I guess is what right. I'm saying. I mean, she probably won't. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, hey, listen, I'd be dropping subpoenas, you know, like gumdrops now. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be subpoenaing Mike Lee and Lindsey Graham 
and everybody that Mark Meadows was texting with. 